Well, hello, hello. I know I'm so excited to see you guys. I could burst. I was hoping that I would get to do another video earlier this week, but it did not work out, so I didn't get to do that. But how happy Daylight Savings Day, right? I'm just like, okay, an hour gone, and it's 1022, but technically we get an extra hour of daylight. I have no clue how that works or how that processes. I know what it meant back in World War II, but we're not in World War II, but... Anyway, nonetheless, closer to spring, closer to the summer. But besides all that, who am I? I'm Garlinda Price. I'm the CEO of Glamour Cosmetics. I'm the CEO of Fusion Properties. And I'm an ordained pastor. And God has called me to you. Why has he done that? He's called me to women in business and in the leadership, specifically ages 19 to 100. I say that all the time because I have owned businesses and successful companies and I've had some failing ones since I was 19 years old. And through it all, God has blessed me to earn a consistent six-figure income. And I just count that a blessing. I am on my way to multi-millionaire status. I'll tell you that because I don't get stagnant complacent and we're going to talk about that in a second because i know who i am so if i had to come up with a title for this tonight's video and tonight's podcast what would that be i don't think you know who you are because if you knew who you are you would not be sitting down on god because you would know that god is an action word and you would be moving forward so i believe in him that after this video you're going to have it down in your spirit who you are and who you were created to be or if you already had an inkling it's going to be firm and sure in your spirit of who you are and why you need to get your honey moving forward to do what god has called you to do so how am i able to press my way to do all that needs to be done on a daily basis right because i am a busy woman just like you all are busy so I'm a mom I'm a wife I'm a pastor I'm an operations manager for a company and I still own two of my own companies right so and I have a ministry so I am a busy girl and I have a puppy who I love his name is Bolt so anyway I digress so let's talk about how do I get it done well one is I have belief which means what I have a believing or feeling that certain things are true or real and trust and confidence in that God has whatever work he's put in me he's going to finish it until the day of his return and I owe him why do I owe him because I was ransomed that means I was bought and paid for with a price that he released me from the fowler snare and now I'm running all that he's called me to do I plan to accomplish it and finish it so I have a firm belief that he has called me and that I'm going to finish this race and I'm going to hear well done so that's one reason I'm able to do all that he's called me to do the other reason I'm able to do all that he's called me to do and to do it with excellence is because I'm consistent, right? He called me to be consistent because anything that we do for God, we got to do it excellence, right? If we're going to say that he told us to do something and it's going to be sloppy, dirty, mediocre, or half done, then he didn't call us to do it because we're not going to be like Cain. We're not going to be like Cain and not give our best and then want to kill our brother over it because he accepted Abel's sacrifice is better, right? So if he called you to do something, be excellent at it and be consistent at it or just don't put his name in it. But I know that's not y'all, so be consistent. So consistency means the quality of being consistent, an action that is always the same or suitable. Because I love you guys, so I know that every Sunday I look forward to getting on here to do these videos. I get so excited about the feedback, the private message, the phone calls I love 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 it makes me happy it brings me joy I love hearing from you guys and then the other thing that it causes me to have I was looking for my other definition the other thing that causes me to be successful it helps me do what God has called me to do and to stay the course even when things don't look like I want them to look the money's not there where I want it to be there because I want to be a multi-millionaire if I can consistently earn a six-figure income and you can consistently earn a six-figure income I want the next level right but I have to be persistent no matter what it looks like because God is going to do it his way I just have to trust his plan and have belief be consistent and then be persistent right and persistence means refusing to give up because it's do or die I'm going to get it done right you're going to get it done we have to be steady and determined, lasting for some time, going on and on, despite rain, despite setbacks, despite all that stuff. So at the beginning of the video, I mentioned that I don't think you know who you are because some of you have believed a lie of the enemy, right? That you're not worthy, that you're not good enough, you're not small enough, you're not big enough, you don't have enough money, you don't have enough time, you don't have enough help, you don't have enough resources, you don't have enough skills, you don't have enough of everything that you want or need to do what God has called you to do and I want to tell you that that's an excuse 
and that's why sometimes people that's why people don't move forward it's not sometimes i'm not going to try to candy coat it or church it up for you because i love you so what is an excuse we know what it is but i want to read it to you an excuse by definition is anything that serves an excuse is a reason that one has made up to explain one's actions so basically it's a lie right an excuse is a lie it's something that someone makes up to explain their actions so i'm not calling you a liar i'm just saying that when we make up excuses we're lying because technically we're making up a reason why we didn't do something that we said we were going to do and if we didn't do something we said we were going to do then it was a lie right that's how god sees it so i don't want you to be a liar and i don't want to be a liar so we got to stop making up excuses and then the thief of our success is procrastination to procrastinate is to put off doing something until later. I'm going to do it when I have more money. I'm going to do it when I have more time. I'm going to do it when my children get older. I'm going to do it when my kids go off to college. I'm going to do it when I get a divorce. I'm going to do it when I get married. I'm going to do it when the house is organized. I'm, I'm about to wear myself out with it. I'm going to do it. So stop procrastinating. Procrastination is a, a, a tool of the enemy to make us keep putting something off, putting something off until we're in a better situation, until we're in a better position. Well, the better position doesn't come until you move and do what God said do because all he's doing is waiting two steps over here for us to move forward to get in position so that he can bless us so you got to stop procrastinating the other thing is sometimes you suffer from unworthiness and low self-esteem with self-esteem I'm going to give you the definition and then we're going to put low in front of it and you're going to see the difference of what it means so self-esteem I need my glasses y'all I don't even wear glasses Self-esteem, though, is your ego, what you think about yourself, your pride, whether that be good or bad. But self-esteem is a feeling that we have about ourselves. So when you have low self-esteem, this is what that means, that you think you're below others, that you um, have a low cost, a low power, or a low amount of strength, or less than the usual amount. You think that you're not good or favorable sad or gloomy meaning if you have low self-esteem you feel sad you feel gloomy if you have low self-esteem you feel that you're at a low level at a low place or a low degree and you stay hidden so that means that if you think those things about yourself so if you make up excuses if you procrastinate and if you suffer from low self-esteem then you cannot accomplish and and be equipped to do the work that God has called you to do. And he's called all of us to do a great work. In case you didn't know, we are in the middle of a revival, right? Church is happening outside of the walls. And God has called us in the marketplace, in his vineyard, that own businesses and that he's called to own businesses and that he's called to impact the kingdom. He's called us to go out and to be a light in a dark and dying world in the vocations that he's called us to be in. So it's not just about the money. It's about the people that we're going to impact and through the impact of the people God is going to bless us with his resources and part of that is money so come on we got to get moving so I just want to share with you how can you move forward when you don't believe you're worthy well I'm going to help you with that so you can move forward and believe and know that God the God of heaven the God that created you he counts you worthy he counts you greater than worthy you are a gift to him a jewel in his eye right and then what it is is the greatest lie the enemy tells believers is that they're not enough they don't have enough, that they're alone, that because of failures, they've missed God. You can't miss something God called you to do because he said that his word will not, will not return to him void. It would accomplish that which he sent it out to do. So if it's going to accomplish that which he sent it out to do, how does the word miss you? How does God miss you? He already knows where we are at all times. We can't even hide from him in a cave or under a rock. So how can you miss God? So don't believe the lying prophet when they come to you and tell you, oh, you miss God, boo-boo. You miss God on this one. Now, you might have missed the timeline that you should have been somewhere or would have been somewhere, but God is a God of second chances. He's a God of third chances. He's a God of forever, and he's not going to lie. Even the children of Israel, when they got on his last nerves, bickering and complaining, he still brought them back to him. The angel still reminded him, what about your people over there? You're just going to let them perish out there for people then to say they weren't your children? He said, uh-uh, I'm not going to let that happen. I'm going to bring them back, and they're going to be my children again, and I'm going to be their God, and I'm going to love them. He is a redeemer, and he is a restorer of the breach. So you don't ever have to believe the lie when you hear it in church and someone comes and try to prophesy lie over you that you miss God. The devil is a lie, and you need to stand up and boldly tell them thus so in a very polite and kind voice. 
You can say it in your southern. Bless your heart. That's a lie from the pits of hell. I'm joking, so I'm getting sidetracked. But anyway, so don't you think that your story was written by your father in heaven and I mean every chapter of your life right every part of your story was written by God the enemy does not have a book on your life and he certainly did not write a story now he might try to interject or put some things in there but God allowed him to he didn't just in input a chapter and he just didn't just input words or he didn't just input actions into the book without God allowing it so that he could be glorified so that God could be glorified so no book begins or ends in the middle right nobody writes a book starting in the middle God said he knew the beginning before the end so that means the whole book is already written and you are guaranteed success at the end of it so cut yourself some slack so if we would get in our minds that we are royalty in God's eyes. That God cre created us to be the splendor, the rich heritage of the power of his glory. And he's placed boldness and greatness within us. If we would just believe that and get that down in our spirit, we would move out. We would mount up on our horses and we would launch out and do what God has called us to do. So tonight I'm going to help you get there. So Psalm 8, I want you to go and read it. And I want you to write it on a note card or a post-it note or put it on your vision board print it out and I want you to read it every day to remind yourself if you suffer with low self-esteem if you suffer with procrastination if you suffer with making up excuses if you suffer with fear the fear of moving out to do what God called you to do because you don't know what's on the other side awesome you don't need to know because if you knew you'd try to help him out and he doesn't need any help I keep telling you he doesn't need an assistant so anyway Psalm 8 O oh Lord, our God, how majestic or how excellent is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. From the lips of the children and infants, you have ordained praise because of your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him, the son of man? that you care for him you made him a little lower than the heavenly beings or angels and crowned him with glory and honor you made him ruler over the works of your hands you put everything under his feet all flocks and herds and the beasts of the field the birds of the air the fish of the sea and all that swim the paths of the sea O oh lord our lord how majestic and excellent is your name in all the earth who are you he just said you're great. He just said he's mindful of you. So who are you? He's mindful of you, right? He has created you to praise him. And through your praise, this verse of scripture says we will silence the foe and the avenger with our praise. He will be glorified. Many of you believe that up to this point, your life has been in vain for nothing, but it's a lie. The word of God says we are made a little lower than the heavenly beings and crowned with glory and honor. Well, I want, I love the dictionary. I use this old Tommy Look Webster's dictionary. I got it from my mom and dad's house. It's my baby, my nine-year-old's favorite dictionary. It's dusty, so it does make me sneeze sometimes. I'm like, where in the world? How long this thing been there? But anyway, crowned means a headdress of gold jewels worn by a king or queen right the power of being a ruler a wreath worn on the head is a sign of honor or victory first place in a contest or championship a heaven with heavyweight champion to honor to reward put at the top with glory which means with great honor fame the condition of being very important successful great beauty and splendor and with honor honor means with great respect given because of worth noble deeds high rank given as a sign of respect a good name and reputation being true to what is right that should be enough to convince you of how much god of heaven our god loves us he knew we would be wretched he knew we would be dirty and he knew at times we would be unlovable and he also knew that we would backslide but he was so mindful of us according to his word that he made us a little lower than the angels, right? How can it get any better than this? And I'm reading from my book. You're going to read it one day, but this is for you because it's not for me. Everything that we do is for someone else. We're going to talk about being a servant next video. So how can it get any better than this? Not only were we created for greatness and commanded to launch into our calling, 
guaranteed that we will meet with success, but God made us rulers over the works of his hands. He put everything under our feet to include the animals. So this means that like the servants that were given cities, when we talked about in the 10 talents, the one servant that had the 10 talents and he multiplied those talents, he was given 10 cities. And the other servant that was given 10 talents that multiplied his five times, he was given five cities. So that's what I'm making reference to. So the servants that were given cities because of their obedience and stewardship to the talents they were given, um, we have been given all of God's property here on earth to control. So you own everything. I don't think you know who you are. You own everything on earth to include the animals. God made us, which means built us, put together, formed us to be rulers, which means he formed us to be queens and kings over his earth. So what are you waiting on? I don't get it. What are you waiting on? So after this video, you should not be waiting on anything. All that he has is ours, according to his word, and he's waiting on us to use it to its full capacity, to its full ability. Stop believing the lie that the enemy is in control. He rules the air, that's true, and he is on earth, that's true with us. However, you just read that we have been ordained, which means to make happen or arrange beforehand, to bring order to establish, to appoint as a minister, a priest, etc. Because we're all disciples of Christ. Whether you've been ordained, licensed, pastored, whatever it is, we're all disciples, right? So we're all ordained and we're all called according to his word. And it says to praise or say good things about him, to give an opinion of, to worship him in song. Praise comes from the Latin word, which means price. So when we praise something, we are saying that we put a very high price on it right so praise God so the word is saying here that we as God's children will do what we were ordained to do which is to praise him then we will silence foes an enemy or opponent and the avenger the one who wants to get even with God for sending his son to save us will be defeated so we've got this right so you're destined for success we're going to talk about servanthood on our next video and what I want you to do is I want you to launch out and to cast your nets, to go out a little further. I know you started a business and maybe it didn't work. I know you launched a ministry and maybe nobody came. I know you started a book and you haven't completed it. I know you're working on your PhD and you've been doing that for about five years. I know that you're trying to complete your master's. I know that your children are acting up. I know that your job is crazy. I get all of that. And so does God. Just start. Begin where you are with what you have and you will see what God will do to multiply your faith and multiply your blessings because you stepped out in faith believing that he would complete a great work in you. I love you. God bless you. And may you have a Psalm 8 sleep good night. Bye.